Alright, what is up guys, welcome back to another video. Now, in today's video, we have some new balance proposals to look at. This was released yesterday, it was released quite late, late yesterday, so I couldn't make a video on it then. But here I am, now in the morning. And to start off with, the HPC have made a tier list based on the poll we did the other week. And honestly, I'm quite baffled by some of the results. So let's look at this and then we'll go on to the balances. I'll talk through them, talk through my opinions a bit. Alright. So, to start off, in S tier, or S minus, whatever, we have Squid, and we have Pirate. Now, straight away, this is surprising to me, because I just don't see many people playing Pirate. If you ask me, Pirate is the best class in the game right now, and clearly a lot of people also think that, because it's been voted as the highest in strength, along with Squid. Yet, you go into a game, and you don't see anyone playing Pirate. Best class in the game has such a small amount of players playing it. Like, is that not weird? People are acknowledging that it's really good and they're still not choosing to play it. Why, why, why is that? Is it because it's harder than most classes? Is it not as fun? I don't, I don't quite get how people can say it's the best and then not play it. That just really confuses me. And then same with Squid. How often... Do you go into a game and see a legit person playing Squid? Like, you see these network level 10 accounts running around with ledge Squid, literally uh, auto-blocking every single fight. Is that why it's in S tier? Because of people like them? Because I, I'm really scared that Squid is made S tier because of cheaters. Because I'm a P3 Squid and I love Squid, but I wouldn't say that it's overpowered. I'm also a P4 Zombie. And if I were to, like, be playing seriously, I would choose my Shaman or my Zombie over Squid any day because they just outperform Squid, in, like, in my opinion. But I just find Squid a, a little bit more fun than Zombie right now, which is why I've been playing Squid. But can you really say, in the hands of a good, legit player, Squid is up here? Like, really? I don't, I don't know, that just really surprises me. I'd say it's, it's a good kit. Like, you put it in A tier with all these other good classes, but... S? And then we still have Werewolf. Like, people are out here on the forums complaining Werewolf is getting outperformed by everything and it's really weak after they've nerfed it. But then it ends up in A+. I don't know, it just find, I find it really weird. Maybe it's just the more vocal people on the forums uh, are sort of portraying a different side to the general community. But to see Werewolf up here in the hands of a good legit player, I don't know. It is what it is. And then, like, we get down to here. Okay. The A tier, yeah, sure. People would complain Enderman's bad and then it ends up in A tier. Like, okay. I don't... There's a, there's just a bit of a... Yeah, okay, what's going on there? Um, We have Mole Man. Okay, I'm, I'm a good... That, I'm happy that Mole Man is in A minus. Because Mole Man and Blaze are both really underplayed. And they're really good. But Blaze has ended up right down here. And Mole Man's ended up in A minus. Like, honestly, Mole Man is probably doing better than Herobrine right now. Its ability does insane damage. You get resistance and absorption with your ability as well. You get the same amount of speed to as Herobrine, if not more. Like, can you say Mole Man is worse when you have infinite source of apples as well? Like, if you get one golden apple, you can recycle that over and over and over so that that one golden apple lasts the entire death match. And you're going to say that's worse? I don't, I don't know. I'm happy that Mole Man's there, okay. I think it could be higher. I don't think people are appreciating how good Mole Man is, but then they're appreciating how good Pirate is, and I see more Mole Man than Pirate. Like, okay. Shaman, yeah, Shaman's fine. Spider's fine. Pig, yeah. Skelly, got, yeah, this is all fine, fine, fine. And, like, it's just this high, this higher S tier stuff. It's confused me a little bit. Yeah, like, I'm fine with this B tier. I think Blaze could be a little bit higher if people actually gave it a chance. And then you got your C plus, like yeah, okay, that's where the that okay, I agree with most of it, but there's just some stuff in here that really confuses me. Okay. And then we get on to the balances made from this. So I believe anything A plus and higher is getting nerfed, and anything B or lower is uh getting buffed, with the exception of Blaze for some reason. That's just been left aside, I think because it got some love recently, but it's still it's still a yeah, it is what it is. So because Squid has now made the S tier, we're going to go straight in to some Squid nerfs. Like, why? Please, Squid. 
go into a game and play Squid, and if you can, like, dominate a game as well as a good pirate can, then fair enough. Maybe I'm playing Squid wrong. But I think it's fine. And what we're going to do... Okay, Squid. Right, right, Squid. Luck of the Sea frequency every four chests to five chests. Uh, for me, that's going to be a stack less. At the moment, I get about uh, 20... I get 20 chests, five stacks of three. That's going to drop down to four stacks of three for me. Okay, that's that's. I don't think that needs to happen. But if it's going to happen, that's okay. Then the kit boots are going from protection three down to protection two. Okay, Squid is a tank. It's not a tank in the conventional sense that it has insane armor. It relies on a big health pool instead with absorption and rejuvenate and squid splash. All giving it loads of health. So it already has lower armor than most tanks. And we're going to drop that even further? Like, really? Is that the way to go? Let's look at this this uh, armor list by um, Sheldon. Where he lines up all the armor. The, uh, this is the average protection I'm looking at because it's the easiest to understand. Okay, and if you look at squid at the moment, it already has worse armor then Hunter, then Mole Man, and then all the other tanks. I think it should be the lowest tank. Yeah, it's the lowest tank in armor protection. And it's just above average right now. And then you're going to lower it down to 66.16%. The same as Arcanist, Shaman, Shark, Snowman, Renegade. Squid, a tank, is going to have the same armor as Shark, which is like a, a proper good DPS right now, okay? Now I know I know Squid does get its tanking ability from the absorption and the rejuvenate, and it doesn't get it from the armor. But still, I'd honestly say that compared to Golem, which has pretty much over four percent more armor than Squid already, and you're gonna lower Squid even more. Like, if Squid is a problem because it heals too rapidly, nerf the healing a slight bit, which is what they're trying to do with Luck of the Sea, I think. But like, even reducing Increasing how many chests you need to get to get an extra absorption pot, you can just counter that by spending an extra minute in the mines. That's not going to like directly. If you're nerfing squid for hoppers, this isn't going to do anything, okay? They can still fast mine and get just as many pots. It would just take them a minute longer. And then if squid is healing too fast, lowering the protection isn't going to do that. It's just going to mean it's a tank that can get quick dropped even faster. Like, if Squid is healing too much, make Rejuvenate worse, okay? Rejuvenate is... It's questionable, okay? I'll talk about that a bit more when we get onto Pirate. It's it's an ability with a 40 second cooldown. So it's not reliable in fights, but when you use it properly, it makes people underestimate how strong you are, okay? Because getting 10 HP out of nowhere is a big change. So... Maybe just make Rejuvenate a bit worse. Maybe make it 8 HP instead of ruining the protection. Because Rejuvenate's already on a 40 second cooldown, okay? Like, it's not like it's busted. You're not going to get it 3-4 times in a fight. But protection, you have protection for an entire fight. And I'm just... You can tell how mad I am, right? We're already 8 minutes and I'm on the first class. This is going to be a long video. Alright, let me get on to Pirate. Pirate's good, okay? Pirate needs a nerf. Um, sea legs cool down 30 seconds to 35 seconds. No, please. And then the fire aspect sword is going from fire aspect 2 to fire aspect 1. Okay, that's needed. The sword is too strong right now. It's the best item for pirate. But sea legs, adding 5 seconds to the cooldown, this is successfully identifying the problem but not giving the right solution. Every 30 seconds at the moment, Pirate is basically getting a rejuvenate, okay? Squid's cooldown is 40 seconds, and it gets 10 HP. Pirate's is 30, and it gets 8 HP, okay? It's it's also giving it speed 2 for 15 seconds. Like, Sea Legs is much, much better than rejuvenate. You're getting a zombie hill and speed 2, okay? Why does Pirate, which is not a healer not a tank have an a four heart hill and this good armor okay it doesn't need both drop the absorption two down to absorption one and leave it at 30 seconds or just get rid of the absorption the potions already give it absorption as well 
it doesn't need a full heart heal every 30 seconds and adding 5 seconds onto that isn't going to change much. That full heart heal is substantial. It is scary and it means that Pirate can win pretty much any 1v1. Okay, right, Werewolf. It's going to get less healing from melee hits by 5%. It's going to get more damage per unique enemy, but they're not changing the cap. So you're going to hit the cap quicker of 6. So you're going to hit it after 5 enemies instead of however many times that goes into 6. I'm not sure. And the healing cap's going back up to 10. I think that was reduced last time. So they're basically reducing the healing from every melee hit and making it more reliant on the ability. So what is this going to do? It's going to make it even worse in 1v1s than it currently is. But it's going to give it the potential to do better in very specific scenarios where you're in a hole with six people and you're rolling out. Oh, it's not even six, sorry, it's five, isn't it? Yeah, five. And you're rolling out constant damage and constant healing and you're hitting this 10 HP cap and this damage cap. In that situation, cool, Werewolf is busted. In 1v1s, it's going to be even worse. This 0.5 damage increase doesn't really change anything because it already had a minimum damage of 1, I believe, if not 1.25. So in 1v1s, all that's happened is you now get less life still than you already got. And then Bloodlust, which is the speed resistance passive, it's going from 8 seconds down to 6 seconds. That passive is actually really nice, but it's not like overly noticeable, so I think that's okay. I think minor buffs like this are the way to go instead of changing the ability every single update back to back to back to back and not letting people sort of learn how to play it. But to be honest, Werewolf is the same category as Squid. It's cheater dominated and legit players, honestly, you can do okay with it, but you just can't roll games with it like people say you can um... okay Gollum uh, Iron Punch will not activate unless there's an enemy within range cool needed Arcanist okay so with Arcanist you're now going to get some sort of effect from assists based on your Tempest passive and they've listed two options Speed 2 for 3 seconds and half a heart instantly healed. Or speed 1 for 3 seconds and 2 HP over 3 seconds. So regen 2 for 3 seconds. Now there's actually a poll to see who's winning. Let's go and have a look at that quick. See what is winning. Speed 2 is slightly ahead. Okay, that's actually quite a lot of votes. I voted speed 2. Now, at the moment, Arcanist gets speed 3 on kills which makes the class really fun but if you're not getting kills you never get to use this passive so I think it's a hundred percent needed to give Tempest on assist because it just makes the class more viable it makes it more fun it means you don't have to focus so hard on timing to get kills and in order to make it fun it's fun because of speed 3 so I definitely think option 1 is better getting speed 2 it's literally for 3 seconds it's enough speed to Dive in and out of fights if you're getting it from every single assist. One HP healed instantly. That can like in a big hole fight that can stack up really quick. It honestly possibly doesn't need the HP healed. That's gonna be interesting because if you're in a big hole and it's just an absolute mess, there's no I don't think there's a cooldown on this. There might be a cooldown. It's not stated in here, so it might already be built into Tempest, I can't remember. But if you're just sat in a hole and you're rolling an assist, you get 10 assists, you just got 10 HP from doing pretty little because it's easy enough to get assists with Arcanist. So maybe speed 2 because that just gives it mobility. It lets you come in and out of fights. It's what Arcanist needs. It's what makes Arcanist fun. I honestly thought, okay, no, speed 3 would be too much. Definitely not speed 3. Speed 2 is the way. Speed 1 not noticeable. I don't know. Come on. But HP, 1 HP healed might be a bit too much, it, like maybe 0.5, because this is 4 assists, and it's easy enough to get assists, it's harder to get kills. And just to make sure this doesn't spiral out of control and make Arcanist busted, perhaps a slight bit less HP, but then the speed's fine, okay? And then option 2, I don't, 
I don't support option two, so I won't talk about it. Um, two H like the thing with regen is, if you get eight assists in three seconds, that's not going to stack up massively. So this option gives you speed two, and it can spiral. It can, uh, you do better the more people there are. This option doesn't really stack unless it's a slightly more drawn out fight. So it's possibly a lot more controllable. But I love classes like Squid and Shaman that spiral with more people. And that's going to make Arcanist more fun for me, certainly. Okay, Creeper. Detonate Radius, 5 blocks to 7 blocks. Okay, so Creeper currently cannot do much above ground because people outrun your ability. So to amend this, let's just increase the range. Is that, that's interesting. Um, that, we'll have to see how that plays out. I mean, two blocks increased range is quite a lot of space in a, terms of a circle. Because it's, it's two blocks in every direction, right? And I, we we'll just have to see what happens with that, to be honest. I don't, I don't think this in isolation can break Creeper. But being seven blocks away from a creeper and taking damage from one is pretty scary. But creeper can still be quick dropped. It can be dealt with. It can't really win 2v1s even with the increased range. Because if you gank a creeper, you're in this five block range. So being in the seven block range is already guaranteed. So that's only really for, for people who try to run away from your ability. Uh, so with speed 2 to hunt people down and a 7 block range, you're going to be able to use TNT now to get the speed from willpower. I think willpower is the speed, right? And then you can blow them up. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I think it's going to be okay. I'm excited. I still don't think Creeper will be played because of this. But we'll see. It's going to be better. I, yeah. Okay. Renegade. So... What they're doing to Renegade is they're adding two timers to the rend ability. The first one is a 60 second timer that resets every time you shoot a new arrow into someone. So if you shoot someone, wait 59 seconds and shoot them again, the timer resets to a minute. That is perfect. That is what we need. The second timer is sort of an overall timer that lasts three minutes. And what it basically says is if you shoot someone, and you've been bullying them for three minutes straight. We're going to stop you bullying them. And we're going to take the arrows out of them. So you have to sort of read this to get your head around it. But the most important thing. The thing that matters most is this 60 second timer resetting. Every time you shoot an arrow. I don't actually know why. Yeah so the 180 second timer is there. Just so you can't bully people. Um, yeah. But Ren's current time of, like, this this 60 second thing resetting is going to make Ren really good. I'm scared it's going to make Ren too good. Again, we'll see. Uh, so if either of those timers hit zero, then all the arrows will fall out. You're going to not hit this 180 second timer that often. Being in a fight with someone for three minutes is a long time. And honestly, I, I don't think it's needed. I think that that's just going to be like... We'll, we'll, we'll see. I'm scared the 180 second timer is going to not be used 99% of the time. And then it's occasionally just going to mess a few renegades up. Because they won't expect this 3 minutes to suddenly expire. And they're going to go in for a kill and all the arrows are going to expire. Um, quality of life change for Renegade. The action bar will now show a yellow check mark instead of green if you're in the broken state. So if you haven't hit an enemy player... You go half as far with the grappling hook, uh, and that's now going to have a visual reminder. And the looting HP on kill is going from 4 to 5 HP. Sure, pretty minor buff. Okay, Hunter. Force of Nature is going from 30 seconds to 20 seconds. I don't need to say much. Like, that's kind of perfect. Force of Nature is the most interesting part of Hunter, and we're getting 20 second cooldown. Cool. I like it. Phoenix. I never share my opinions on Phoenix because I don't like Phoenix. But power 2 uh, is coming back, and that is essential. Energy per hit is going up to 8 on melee and up to 16 on a bow. So that's like a uh, proportional change to both of them, which is interesting. Sunray now heals 2 times HP with direct hits. Sunray direct hits now have a distinctive sound effect, 
and Sunray's healing is slightly reduced. So, I haven't done the maths, but hitting a direct hit, right, is going to heal for 3 HP, and because of this new EPH, you can now get Sunray a lot more frequently. So what this is basically doing is it's saying, hey, we've acknowledged that people are only using Spirit Bond because it's much better, so let's give you an alternate and we'll make Sunray good again. And yeah, it's gonna make Sunray good again. So it's gonna it's gonna work. Direct hits are gonna be hard to hit. I like it. It rewards skill with a bow. It sounds okay for supports. Yeah. Assassin! Yay! Assassin love! Shadow cloak footsteps removed. Perfect. It's too hard to track assassin. Uh too easy to track assassin right now. Shadow cloak gives the resistance user one while they are invisible. Why? That that doesn't really fit Assassin's motive. But um I mean, sure. It'll make it better. Like you can't deny an, a buff to Assassin, but I don't think that's in line with what Assassin does. But I'm not going to complain because yeah, Assassin needs a buff. Okay, this is the most important part. It's I saw a forum post on this and I guess this is where it comes from and it's basically making Assassin be able to assassinate people really cool how this works is the lower a player is the more damage you deal when coming out of shadow cloak and it does 10% of their missing HP which means at max you can do what basically 4.399999 HP uh, additional is that oh god I'm, I'm messing this up a bit uh, with the minimum of one bonus damage uh, and yeah up to three bonus damage sorry so yeah, at most you can do about four, four damage when coming out of a set, uh, out of your cloak, and for a a one on one class for what assassin can already do with shadow cloak for repositioning, and now it can't be tracked as easily, and how quickly you get shadow cloak, it's a class with already insane damage that's getting an even better damage buff, but only in certain scenarios, and this is really good. It's just going to make assassin do what it should be doing. I'm praising this update, I love it. And then we're also changing the Blast Prot 2 into Projectile Protection 2, which brings Assassin even more in line with what it should be doing. I love all of these Assassin changes, even the questionable resistance one. I'm really happy for them, okay. Snowman, uh, energy per hit is going from six to eight. Energy per hit with the bow is going from three to eight, so you now always get eight energy. The EPS is going from one to two, wow. Um, Blizzard's energy cost is going down from 7 to 6. That's a lot of changes to energy. It's uh, Actually, we've got a few more to come. Snowman Companion energy is going from 3 to 2. So you're basically... Um, I think for the longest time, the HBC have said, uh, with Snowman, you have Snowman. And if you use Snowman well, you're going to do well. And after months, uh, years of trying to balance it properly, they've said actually we're going to make it so that you can rely on yourself more than your snowman. Which is a shame because it takes some of the skill out of the class but it's it's just what needs to be done to be honest. Snowman's not going to be good when it's relying on snowman for energy. So now we're getting but more energy uh, from our player and a tiny bit less from snowman and that means we can just cycle ice bolts a lot, lot quicker at last. It's going to make Snowman a better damage class. But we'll read through the rest of the buffs quick, or it changes. Um, quality of life change. Left-clicking a diamond shovel on your Snowman will despawn them. So that just means if you want to pill it up or mine down, you can without Snowman annoying you. It does, however, mean that you now have to carry a diamond shovel in your inventory again, in your hotbar, if you want to do this. Which doesn't sound right to me because adding a previous update to make blizzard on bow was getting rid of this and now you have to have the diamond shovel back for no reason really um you already have pumpkins and snow blocks and stuff so don't really need that um you could just make it so that you can attack your own snowmen but there could be a lot of accidents with that so maybe p just punching a a snowman with a, like a a pumpkin or something because then you can use pumpkins as well as shovel and then you sort of use your pumpkins and once you run out of pumpkins you can equip your shovel instead. Now snowman companion mobs will now receive 50% of the damage from bow shots. 
cool little buff to snowmen, which is nice. Uh, the action bar will now show how many mobs you have in the field. Quality of life, we love it. Snowman companion duration is going from 85 seconds down to 30 seconds. And the snowman companion mid-game spawn rate is going from 45 seconds down to 20 seconds. So they're basically making it so that you cycle your snowmen a lot more. They're forcing you to build snowmen more often because they're not really changing the EPH that much, I guess. Um, but I guess you can still get four snowmen. Building four snowmen every 30 seconds is a big pain. I honestly think that with the energy changes to the player, the snowman kill class, that snowmen are going to be left behind a lot. But we'll see. And then finally, uh, when you get a pumpkin, you're only going to get two ingots down from four. And when you get a snow block, you're getting one ingot down from two. That doesn't need to happen. Snowman is a low-key iron class that's getting fair amounts of iron. You can get iron for two people, yourself and someone else. And this is going to mean you can get iron for just yourself. I mean, if the HPC want to do that, they can. I'm not going to stop them. I'm not going to make a big outrage about it. But I think Snowman's nice. It's just a subtle class that can give a, a teammate iron, help out here and there. And I don't think it needs to be nerfed. I don't know where that's come from. Uh, but that is everything happening with the update, summed up in a short 26 minutes. It's not even a big update. This is a this is a longer video than the phase two update, and look at it. It's not a long update. I just have a lot of views on this update for some reason. I think the fact that they're only changing like eight, nine, ten classes shows that the game's already pretty balanced, which is really good. How many are they changing? Four, five, six, seven, ten. Yeah. Um. Anyway, tell me what you think in the description. Go check out the thread if you haven't and share your opinions because the HBC uses all sources of information for their balances and it helps them. Uh, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.